You're watching Channel 3, SF TV. Sounds yeah. fair, because that's not the mission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, the one thing that that ship cannot be is the ship you were looking for. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Although someone on that ship could be someone you're looking for. That's true. <laughs> the ship could, could be. be on the ship that we are. Yeah, the ship that we are looking for could be on the ship that we're not looking for. Yes, yeah, so and that would be awful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I briefly went back and took a peek at Elan of Troyes. Yeah. Um, and I had forgotten. <laughs> Remember, I grew up on these things in black and white. So you forgot that Ambassador uh, I completely uh, didn't Petri forgot because green. I never, yeah, because I never, I mean, I watched it later in color, but it's imprinting on me as a kid <clears throat> is in gray, shades of gray. Sure. And so, therefore, yeah, I was watching. I was like, dude, that, that dude is really green. Really green. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So. Okay, everybody, wake up. We got shirts and kid parties. Wake it up. Wake it up. Danny, Chris, and Tracy, wake it up. Wake it up. The Partridge family wake up with Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's begin. Here we resume after the commercial break on what is it, September 16th, the first official episode of Star Trek First Response. It's the year 1970. Before the commercial break, the crew of the Avicenna, uh, Mondragon, Ensign Mondragon, had noted at the tactical station a ship traveling at warp at speeds fast enough to classify it as not being native to this system. It was a momentary blip. Uh, he signaled for Korsakov. By the time Korsakov was able to travel to the station, the blip had been lost. Uh, and the Ensign tried to regain contact, but for whatever reason, no longer had a, uh, a reading on the vessel. Korsakov had advised him to note the time and location of the activity, and uh, standard practice would be to continue scanning for the vessel. But as of... The close uh, before that commercial break, the Avicenna had been given situational command over the Trojan vessels that are participating in the search and have been given all the search data so far about what sectors have been searched, which will reveal some information I'm going to get at soon. Elasian ships are far fewer than Trojan ships. The trade imbalance in this sector being what it is, Troyes has much more to offer to uh, star-faring civilizations that have ships that they can handle you know, available. And so that's why... Except for critical resource on ELAS. This is the thing, right? Which the Federation has been shepherding so that the Elasians don't uh, get taken advantage of. And that is something for... How kind of the Federation. <laughs> well, something for debate. But that was what was uh, negotiated in, in years past. And uh, while, uh, while certain members of the crew may feel that certain members of the Federation, let's call it a government, uh, may not see eye to eye politically, Overall, there's a reason why such stellar people are loyal to the notion of the Federation. And that, you know, they're not out to take advantage of you. They're trying to lift everybody up 
which can be just as devastating <laughs> by, by, by accident. So there's lots to debate about. But uh, uh, mustache. Why do I tortle- think that? Why do I think that Archie Bunker and his son-in-law are having a spirited discussion over this very episode <laughs> as we speak? You, you can imagine, yeah. mm-hmm. right? But, it, but there's no mustache twirling federation. There may be mustache mm-hmm. twirlers in the federation. I guess mm-hmm. is is the point. <laughs> no, that's quite fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll open up this segment of the episode with the Avicenna beginning its search pattern. It's maintaining uh, a detailed sensor scan looking for a repeat appearance of that vessel. But the detail I mentioned about the search is that one, the Federation has very sparse star charts of this system as has been discussed already. And for the Troyans and the Elasians themselves, they operate mainly by following navigational beacons. There are Mm -hmm. literal space Mm -hmm. lanes between the planets. They don't have outposts yet. They haven't built star bases yet. All we know is what the island hoppers know. We just don't (laughs) have the big map. Right. There you go. Right. Right. So their search grid has been using that space lane as its main reference point and they have been you know traveling a certain distance from it on either mm-hmm. side in mm-hmm. in like an alternating sweeps like a like a helical dna yeah. pattern sadly to enough approach. that is sensible they it's don't. very sensible yeah, yeah. Uh, in the approximately two days that they've had to conduct their search they haven't found it <clears throat> on the lane and they're beginning to further mm-hmm. shape their 3d pattern around the lane for you know different directions for things to have gone wrong they have no system data about uh comets or you know meteors or other uh naturally occurring hazards that that may have uh, been the cause they haven't been looking for debris they ha- you know they've been looking for massive amounts of debris like the whole ship getting scuttled but they haven't been looking for any of the little things that can happen like such as impacts right uh their thinking about space travel is very much uh an inherited technology rather than one they developed themselves from a long culture of other technologies so uh, there are there are gaps in their reasoning there's gaps in their thinking and this isn't what upset ambassador kotri you know, Captain or Acting Captain Tillich is very aware, based on his success in handling that that uh, negotiation or that that meeting, that welcome meeting, that Ambassador Kotri was trying to cause an argument. What is not clear is why. Why would he be trying to cause an argument? But the Avicenna has situational control over the search and is now in the process of at a faster speed with higher gain sensors initiating that's uh, a, that search plan working with the locals for what what they can comprehend had ensign yang been successful in creating a superior search grid if he had had access to good solar system data in order to make that plan then we'd be in a very different situation but as as now we know that they travel along this route so we have to start there so as we can hear the engines throbbing below deck right and we can uh, hear constant soft murmuring across the bridge of different sensor crews talking to each other right it is just before shift change right so we're going to open up in and if you want to bring up your diagram of the ship to find out where we are, we're open up in the the mess hall for uh, officers and uh, enlisted. 
Right. So there, there is. Uh, is this uh, like a cafeteria-looking place? This is exactly like what we have seen in the that other show, right? There are mm -hmm. banks of not replicators; they haven't been invented right. yet, right? There's food distribution. There's a a gentle mix of human right. hands and and processes, mm -hmm. computer processes that produce the food. And you know, you you put in your tape and you select, you make your selections. Mm -hmm. The door slides open, and there's your stuff. So that's all along one wall for receiving and returning. And there are isolated mess areas just for enlisted and just for officers. This is that kind of common ground because it's a Federation starship. We open up with Anson Yang with his tray getting ready to eat. And we have Joanne Parker, our uh, successful against all odds Helms officer from from the strike oh. of the wave, uh, the particle wave, wave particle. Mm -hmm. And we a good have... good role earns you a name. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. And we have uh, now Ensign Ambuto. Right, right, right. <laughs> acting ensign, acting, <laughs> acting, acting ensign, current yeah. ensign, <laughs> right, currently <laughs> ensign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So these three characters have arrived at the mess at the same time, and you know, are, are they didn't come together? They're not together, right? But of course, there's there are the the shifts are staggered, right? So we have different things going on all around, and as we uh, as we come through the doors into the mess area, you know, you know, green lit against one wall, purple lit against another wall, kind of a soft orange glow throughout, gray tables, gray walls, gray floor, you know, and this kind of hum resonating in the background. Uh, the conversation is still, the topic of conversation is still about the events at Xenon 5. Right. So, Against the back wall, we can hear uh, the pilot who operated the Febris, and we can hear the pilot who operated the Sulk. They're they're talking about you know what the what the Romulan vessel looked like from space, and uh, and they're building up the threat. You know they're they're talking to enlisted, and of course, those of you who are on the bridge know that at no point did we reach a point where weapons were going to be fired. There was some some doubt about weapons being charged, but you know, we we weren't there. But they're telling the story about how they they basically did a, a hot combat descent to the to the planet. You know. And of course, you know, there's there's uh, appropriate listeners of the appropriate gender for uh, the appropriate reaction to their bravery. Mm -hmm. So this is happening in the in the background. Was Joanne present throughout that entire bridge sequence where the Romulans she, came she to was relieved before it ended, but uh, right. but she was she was there for part. She of was it. there. Okay. Right. Okay. I believe she went she she was part of the uh, team that was sent to Potemkin. Right. Right. So she uh, had okay. she was on a different bridge. Uh, got it okay. getting different information and okay. definitely seeing people right. not firing at other people right right and uh, right. or okay. or intimating that there was going to be firing right you know mm -hmm. so this this fantastic story far more colorful than than maybe the actual event i mean the the real piloting thrills about the the atmosphere about the energy discharges about the lack of visibility that part of the story is not being told you know the landing zone with its unstable surface not being told. It's the threat of the Romulans, right, turning them into a real uh, mess hall boogeyman. All right, so, uh, as Ensign Yang Yang comes in, right, conversation at a different table stops. In that way, that everybody who's ever been to secondary school recognizes as they were talking about you. 
So there, there's there's <laughs> incident one, with his trade. Two people look table. away, mm. two people stare. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. While this hero conversation is playing out in the in the background, but he's alone. Anson is alone. He didn't didn't come in <laughs> with anybody, but there are you know allies in the field. So who wants to take Joanne? Ron, I want Joanne. Okay, which leaves but, yeah. <laughs> but? well, only that. If I just elbowed somebody in the temple to get Joanne, I'm happy to be politer about it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <laughs> um, speak up if I am seizing Joanne out from somebody else's clutches. I don't know in Buto. <laughs> That's the only. Well, these characters are represented. Their skeletons are in the wiki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, but as far as their personalities, Joanne hasn't had the opportunity to develop mm -hmm. one yet. And mm -hmm. Buto has uh, demonstrated himself. How will we just, he's not exactly surly. Uh, <laughs> Short spoken would be <laughs> maybe a way to describe it. Well, him. I think the my understanding of him is that he actually has a great deal of brutal field experience as a you know, combat and conflict zone medic right? Um, or science guy um, and has been with the Avicenna for a long time, formerly a lieutenant, colluded with lieutenant Korsakov commander. in the use of the, you know, lieutenant commander. Yeah, so he was at Spock's rank. Um, he colluded with Korsakov to use the alien artifact Um in order to, to keep the captain and others alive um, and has really, and he was demoted due we may, to, right. We may speculate, seeing as how he has the most significant rank reduction, maybe the only rank reduction, right. uh, that me he may have uh, taken, right. taken the, the rap. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and also that uh, he's... Um, He's treated, as far as I can tell, by most of the people who know him as if he were at his former rank. It would be very I mean, difficult. He's, not the way that he was, yeah, and the way that he was functioning on the bridge with his sensors and stuff like that, which he's really good at, <laughs> um, is they, they treated him like, you know, a full on bridge crew, knows what he's talking about, relied upon guy, not like a junior officer. So, and he um, had that scene where he basically was part of the assistance to calm the the, the bridge crew okay. with Anya. Yeah, right. I'll give it a shot. I'll mm -hmm. give it a shot. But mm -hmm. uh, advice from a game that Ron wrote, actually, is that how you play the character is how you play the character, mm -hmm. and we will learn yeah. who they are as an aggregate function of all the episodes they appear in, rather than you having yeah. to yeah. emulate someone else who. Yeah, could play I them. think that's kind of the beauty of the supporting character role that you know, right. everyone I completely has a chance agree. to everyone has yeah. a chance to fork to shake them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as Anson Yang comes in, as there's this drop of silence from, from one table, as we recognize the characters who are here that we have seen before, right? Our view kind of pans around the side of the cafeteria and one of those silent individuals gets up leaving their tray he's carrying a bright red tape right and he walks up to Anson Yang and he in that kind of callous disrespectful way drops it on the tray next to the food It's the computer operations manual. Oh, <laughs> wait, he's dropping it on my tray? <laughs> yes, he's dropping it on your tray. <laughs> okay. And, the, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little non-secular. Like, what's he talking about, this, this computer operations thing? Like, you know, the next time you're asked to do a report, maybe you'll be able to do it. 
Is this looks, a higher ranking officer? This is an ensign, right? just like you. And he looks back over his shoulder for <laughs> for support from you know the other mm. ensigns, you know the right. uh, from different departments who uh, are kind of blank at the moment. Hmm. Okay. Uh... And Buto will lean back in his chair and cross <laughs> his arms, not saying anything, but making it very clear to the room that he is watching the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sing Yang will just reply in saying that, um... Hmm. How would Anson Yang react to this? Uh, so I'm I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to put into words per se, but I'm I'm trying to give the impression that Anson Yang is gonna reply in the sense that at least I got to sit in the big chair. Mm. I'm the one that's <laughs> trying to captain. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the one who has to make the report. <laughs> so if you have something to say to the captain, you can tell him yourself. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> but in the most in the most diplomatic way as he was raised. Oh, you want to be dipl <laughs> diplomatic about it. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Um so let's let's in see fact, what kind of in impact. Fact, let me just let me just play a bit of his focus. Yeah, do it, I'll do it. Quote, I'll quote something from a staff people. Okay. That it's my job that you know you have a prop I know what the, I know what I'm doing. Maybe it's maybe it's insinuating. Maybe it's your fault that you didn't give me a proper report to tell the captain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I'm hearing is that there is a little bit of bold attitude yeah. going on. Like, hey, you know, I was at the chair, and I'm hearing Starfleet protocol to to back you up. And of yeah. course, we have this the silent looming threat of Imbuto. <laughs> 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 So what I'm thinking is that we're, we're going to have to rely on presence here. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, and it sounds like command. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So presence and command. This is a, an opposed role sort of situation. So let me, let me clear away the challenge dice and Bring in these dice. All right. And uh, <laughs> so this ensign has kind of thrown the gauntlet down. Right. Yeah. And like Ensign Yang, he's he's new on the ship. We don't know what his name is. You haven't worked with him. We really don't know who this guy is. But he knows who you are. So that's interesting. And oh, that call from the ambassador has almost certainly, <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the locker room talk through the ship has not failed. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So his, his retort, you know, which, which has to, you know, bash up against your defense is, um, well, the reason why we, everyone knows the reason why you're in that chair. Right, which is yeah. you know political connections. Yeah, I can, I can, I can mm -hmm. see that easily. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this character is the active character. This character is the is the aggressor in the situation, and they're not getting any assistance from their table, and no. they haven't really done anything to significantly get under Yang's skin. We can hear that in the dialogue that was that was delivered back right it's a snappy retort you know i was in the chair here's here's the protocol it's like oh yeah well you know you're related yeah. to somebody important <laughs> you know so his difficulty is unmodified but i'm going to reduce ensign yang's difficulty by one based on the having two solid responses to the to the attack which makes this difficulty one for ensign yang and difficulty two for our villain of the scene. And I'm going to spend one of our threat in order to enhance said villain's chances. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be eating a complication if you lose this, I bet, for whatever <laughs> important thing you have to do soon. So, 
Do we still have momentum? I, I can bring I up the... the uh... I can't recall the numbers. I believe it was dry because I think we haven't generated any yet. One moment. We had a couple. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let me throw in my my enthusiastic support for blowing our precious momentum on a pissing match in the mess hall. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? <laughs> if I've learned anything over the last couple of sessions, is that these insignificant pissing matches oh, are much you... more important than the yeah. The but, comp and, oh, yeah, I think you will be. Complications will pile up on you yeah. through anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, we who knows what this guy does. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Knows what right. this asshole does that's so critical <laughs> to our survival soon, you know. Yeah. So, so here goes was... here goes the threat that right. I'm spending mm -hmm. to get to mm -hmm. buy that yes. die for the adversary, and right. now you have the chance to modify I your will... pools. Okay, I will buy one more dice with momentum, which allows me to use my untapped potential. Assuming uh -huh. ah, yes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> So this is the best place to demonstrate untapped potentials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enthusiastic, a thumbs up. Now, you know, if you, oh, you rolled. Okay, so we're done. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Anthony. Roll your Anything dice. Else? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to suggest in my in my usual oh threats you could you could add to it by threat you know you could yeah. have a little aggression going on. Okay, so here's my yeah. here's my much. reply. <laughs> We have a 19, a 14, Ooh. and a an 18. How weird. Oh, my wow. God. What a crap roll for you. <laughs> Does he exactly trip? Exactly the same. <laughs> I'm exactly the same. You oh, rolled a 19, oh, a 14, really? and an 18? Yep. <laughs> wow. So, but, however, that should still mean I have a success. Oh, uh, equal. So I have, to beat the, I have to be equal to the target number, right? Equal or less. Equal or less, yes. Yeah. 14 is equal. 14. All right, equal. one. Woo. So you got one yeah. success. Wow, you scratched some, that one out. Zero mm. momentum. <laughs> your your potential <laughs> is still tapped. <laughs> oh, <it's> still tapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Had you generated momentum, of course, I would be rolling a challenge die. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. The rapid one-two punch from Ensign Yang kind of defangs the Cobra of the moment, who then, you know, turns around looking for support. His whole table is eating with, with <laughs> relish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a little um, mustard. Joanne was on her way to sit at that table. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a 90-degree turn and sits <clears throat> next to Ensign Yang. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So then, you know, the story continues in the in the background, but the the volume, the volume mm -hmm. drops mm -hmm. a little bit, and the the details about the Romulan threat kind of filter back toward. And there was like this wicked wind shear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me just add some bit of, a bit of salt to injury, as uh -huh. I defended myself in success. I returned the tape again. Ah, right. You need this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Study up if you want to be on the bridge. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Mm. All right. And we close out from this scene. And I remember momentum decay. So now your momentum pool is is empty. All right. So we How come there's no threat decay. <laughs> Because... I know, I know. Unfair, unfair. Because, because we're protagonists and protagonists are also called the screwedest ones. Mm. I'm not going to answer your question, apparently, because you're all screwed. I had an answer, right. but you don't get to hear. <laughs> yeah. um, mm. The next scene is a cutscene. It's not one for you. All right. Outside that room with the fountain that the ambassador communicated with uh, mm -hmm. Captain Tillich with. There's the obvious signs of a heated argument and Ambassador Kotri is standing there looking, looking very frustrated. And a similarly garbed but younger Troyan is standing there saying, well, 
the only reason that they chose you is because you're older and you won't have many opportunities to interact outside the limits of this system, but clearly the younger and better man is required. Ooh. And we cut back to the bridge where Boy, it's... we thought that we thought the Alasians were arrogant, but <laughs> <laughs> we cut back to the bridge where the search pattern is, you know, as expected, uh, yielding no fruit. Um, and it's time to approach things differently. So we have uh, the shift has started for for this group. So we've got Anya Smith at communications. Anyone can play her if they prefer. Uh, Lieutenant Korsakov is at tactical. Uh, acting Captain Tillich is in the big chair. And Anson Yang has arrived for his duty turn as the flight controller at the helm station. Around us, every position is full. Right? Engineering, life support, auxiliary control, etc., uh, etc. Et and there is a yeoman next to the captain's chair who's, you know, got the usual report for fuel and energy consumption. Ganymede the cupbearer standing next to the chair as they should. <laughs> and then she has to get this uh, signed off by the executive officer. And the Avicenna hasn't had an executive officer since arrival at Dry Dock when all of the legal proceedings took place. And she very shyly, the yeoman very shyly, puts the the designation form, you know, uh, where you would nominate an officer to be the executive officer. She, put, she slides that on top of the fuel form, doesn't say anything, doesn't challenge the, the Vulcan captain, but just kind of holds it out there, hoping that he'll take the initiative. It's, it's very, very obvious. And assign an executive officer, you mean? Yep. Okay. Uh, and executive officer is different from first officer, right? Uh, it's it's the same. So it's first officer oh, okay. in the in the original uh, series is what I should be saying. The first officer, right? But, uh, right. Uh, in the core book, it's listed as the executive officer, mm -hmm. and like the captain, that role has specific duties. It is possible for a character to have multiple roles on the ship, especially on a smaller crew. Uh, such as ours. science officer plus first officer, that which kind is what of thing. what right. Spock right. had, right. Yeah. and right. that was right. a large vessel, but he was just awesome. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, haven't given this any thought. Um, right. You don't have to do it now because she's just yeah. kind of. Now would be a good time to do it, though, and I think, given that this is sort of. But Oops. given what Tillich has done so far, uh, he's going to put Imbuto as the exo. Oh, wow. Are you just a pain in the butt? That's going to make mm -hmm. things very difficult for Imbuto, but uh, it's a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like the cut of your jib, sir. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Ensign Schmensen. That's a temporary designation. We'll get that uh -huh. prepared. Yep. We'll fix that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so um, Ambuto makes it to the the bridge just in time to be assigned additional <laughs> duties. Not just the science officer, but mm. now he's the the first officer as well. Is that evident to the members of the bridge? Well, we'll find out. Uh, does okay. anyone want to play the role of Ambuto rather than their main character? I, I could do it for this purpose, if unless you All right. So we'll do it for this for this case, scene, okay. the, the promotion scene, plus the uh, let's make a search grid yeah. scene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Korsakov is now a supporting character in this Correct. scene, and can be used to provide assistance dice mm -hmm. in in areas where uh, he could be useful, but is otherwise like Montgomery Scott. He's in the background of the shot mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. doing his work. All right. So Ambuto is uh, arrives just as this decision gets made. 
have, have I, okay, clarify a little bit to me, the, the doors, whoosh, right? right? And so is, am I summons to the bridge specifically, or am I supposed to be here right You're now? You're supposed to be there. It's your, it's your Okay, it's supposed to be here. Uh, I'll come in and say, uh, uh, you know, Ensign Mbuto reporting for duty and uh, go to my station. That would Unaware. be a good opportunity for Tillich to uh, take that top form and um, mm -hmm. say, could you have uh, Ensign Mbuto sign off on these, please? At, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm liking this. At the moment, Mbuto is completely oblivious to the significance. He hasn't seen the forms. Mm -hmm. So he kind of gives a, a look of what forms <clears throat> and hands out, you know, is, is willingly going to take the forms from the yeoman willingly you know right. sure i'll sign off on the so she's she's and a bit confused. just like a freeze right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a bit confused takes the form walks she has to walk down off the captain's pedestal by yang she doesn't exactly wink but she doesn't not wink either and Ooh. she goes up through the the next flight of stairs past tactical to science where she hands them off and boom the top form right. is so and and I think that that actually this is where the yeoman and Ambuto will look at each other, right, right. So <laughs> that so he's he's like, oh, what of forms? There must be some some. And she has you know, this, you know, this, this must be some sciency thing, you know. And then it's like, looks up at her. She looks at him, smiling, not smiling. Right. She's trying to hide it like it's a right. like it's a surprise. Right. I, I see. Mm -hmm. Looks at it. Is there a, and, is and there a problem, actually, <laughs> <laughs> signs you know shifts uh, takes that one off signs the you know the the thingy that this mm -hmm. is all about um and says none sir thank you mm -hmm. not missing a beat um, anya smith mm -hmm. triggers the computer mm -hmm. and says Computer, please prepare to recognize on the captain's authority the new first officer. And then she switches off to the command chair. A certain supporting character smiles into his screen as he checks the <laughs> as he checks the uh, the scanner. <laughs> the, well, actually, what he yeah he's actually if if anyone's interested, Korsakov is making sure that the shields go up at a touch of a button. Mm -hmm. Now this this is a field uh, assignment. So would this be acting, or would this be proper mm. first officer? What if if Tillich doesn't end up being the captain, then all mm -hmm. all positions right. are yeah. going to be right. changed anyway, or him, right. could right. change. Right. So it's mm -hmm. it's as real as anything else. On the... mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you've just okay. doubled is his it... workload. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> cool. All right. So we go through the sequence of you know now the the ship recognizes and gives new access uh, rights to uh, Anson and Buto, like to personnel records and 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 the like. And uh, the the yeoman takes the clipboard. She's going to go down one deck to administration, where all this stuff is going to be filed and, and processed and the rumor mill can be started all right importantly so the task at hand this shift has to deal with the problem of how to expand and accelerate the search right mm -hmm. uh, you should be able to detect a ship traveling under its own power even this you know the, the primitive nuclear reactors that they are that they're using in this system that you should be able to detect them unless they are obscured by large bodies hiding behind a planet massive asteroid or something like that and why would they be doing that right so they should be detectable right so we should have been able to detect any ship that is trying to be found or at least actively not trying not to be found i think we may want to help out our limited colleagues in this search they are used to a certain type of 
search pattern used on these space buoys. I don't think we want to introduce them to a full three-dimensional search grid. This might not be something that they can acclimatize to quickly. So uh, science and maybe tactical, perhaps you could come up with a new set of space buoys that we can use to augment the search grid to expand into new areas. This might give our colleagues a more useful point of reference to uh, join in the search and we can expand the grid that way. The ship is equipped right. with sensor boys that can, you know, like for incursions across the neutral zone or whatever, like as a destroyer, it's equipped with being able to drop that kind of device and also has uh, a limited number of sensor probes. Mm. I was just about to suggest that. <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh, please, please suggest it. Uh, no, we have probes, which we uh, mm. just need to look for their rules for that. Well, let's let's set up a new uh, search grid system where the uh, local ships can search along new space lanes that we will set up using buoys, and our ship and the probes can focus on the areas between the lanes uh, that they may be less comfortable exploring. And I assume we're using its point of disappearance as kind of our origin point, even though, even though it's been two days, right? Yeah. We can yes. add a couple of points of interest, including the point that it disappeared, the major settlements on the planets. And I think we may want to throw in a point of uh, sudden detection that we had recently as a, as a point of interest. Mm -hmm and then get the computer to map out an optimal search plan based on those parameters. Okay. So for the rules on the probes, if you if we launch them, it's a difficulty zero task. Um, and it reduces census we pass by two. So that is a optimal tool to use when you do use census sweeps. Good suggestion, Ensign. So we release the probes. Uh, I'm guessing we are releasing the probes to the designated points of interest, or are we doing more of like a pattern thing? I think we release the pr we we set up a new. We asked the computer to set up a new search grid based on maybe two or three new lanes that we will create in the system uh, and using sort of four or five points of key reference and then get the computer to suggest locations for our probes and the Avicenna itself. Right, the first set is for the benefit of the Trojans. Right, right. The, 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 uh, the new- um, Or the context buoys. for the Trojans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the new buoys are to set up new space lanes for them to explore. Okay. The probes and uh, are for us to go in between the lanes to explore the rest of the system. All right, very cool. You have laid out the framework for an extended task, which is a gated task. Mm -hmm. Each part needs to be done before the next part can be right, attempted. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first part will be the creation, uh, you know, the programming, the readying of the the boys for the new lanes for the locals to traverse relaying their their sense of data the second part will be actively searching with the avicenna and the third point will be collating data to look for the most likely spaces for the ship to be if we haven't already found it kind of thing all right now this produces a work track of 15 a total work track of 15, mm -hmm. right? So five and five and five. These aren't particularly challenging stages, but they they do take time and they, they are, dis, are distinct, mm -hmm. right? So um, the first role will be undertaken by the person that you designate 
you know. Um, I think this is a good task for our new XO to take. I think so. Yeah. The mm -hmm. new first oh, officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me call up my character sheet for him. Cool. Um, which will take a couple of file openings. I'm, I like a tidy desktop, which means that mm -hmm. I close everything, mm -hmm. which means that then I have to do something and I have to start the program again. And right. so I make, I make the windows developers cry because I don't use, I don't like all my windows open. So, so give the, me just a moment to the task ahead of him is preparing the, the lanes and preparing the boys, right? So these are two separate tasks, each requiring five work. Okay. So oh, I said wow. 15 before, but that's because, uh, math and I are not friends. What I'm talking about is a work track of 20, <laughs> right? There's, a, oh my there's God. A, like another that. step, the right? Full step. Right, so okay, so if I go to our wiki and I pull up our guy, yeah, um, supporting, get back to. Uh, so I, sh I just should be there by name. Yeah, yeah I wish yeah, I yeah, yeah. by name. So nope, you have awesome. to switch. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there uh, he is. Any, any magnitudes of resistance we should be aware of? Right. So the the magnitude of the task is. This is what's defined by by breakthroughs. It's the number of aha moments that are required to complete it, and that allow you to bypass completing all of the work. Right now, in this particular task, um, the aha moments are not appropriate, which is why I've set it up as five, 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 and five. Right. right? Um, but if you had a, a work track of fifteen as one task and a magnitude of two, right? That would mean you want to get two breakthroughs, which would allow you to complete it basically in five to ten work instead of doing all the fifth, all the fifteen work. If that makes sense, resistance takes away from the results on your challenge dice. So momentum can be spent uh, pre-roll. And I get an assist from another fellow on the bridge, specifically Ensign Yang, who is deploying the tech that in question or at least involved or yeah, not there's no there's no reason why uh, okay so momentum can be spent before the roll to negate uh the resistance or resistance mm -hmm. all at work yeah or, all reroll dice there you go okay. mm -hmm. we don't have any though left do we i know yeah. <laughs> we still have one by based on my memory. <laughs> no, that, no, that, that went slipped with away the with the scene. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. Right, right, right. We decayed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It is then. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. yeah. Um and that would just simply could be represented by rushing, right? Because of the urgency mm. of the situation. It's been two days since they reported the disappearance, but the ship was three days overdue. Oh. So they've been yeah. somewhere in the system five. for five days. Oh, they could be fucking anywhere. This is great. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So actually, that's a bit of dialogue, I think, to remind the viewer and us just what that's what safe. we're up against here. <laughs> I mean, this is this is brutal. No wonder so many so, so much work over at the science okay. console. You know, we've, we've got Ensign Ensign Yang has moved over. Right. We'll right. start a new scene right. for this. And so in the background, you know, we've got we've got uh, Captain Tillick and, and we can hear Anya Smith communicating and coordinating and, and all of this stuff. And, you know, we've got the, the view of the, we've got the computer whirring away and we have a view of the system, right? And it's calculated already the, the maximum range at the maximum speed of the ship, right? It could be at the outer reaches of the solar system, but not beyond in this five days of travel. That's how slow they are. Well, but, that's assuming that they didn't get tractor beamed and warped away by somebody else. Exactly. <laughs> but like if if it's operating under its own power, it could not have left the solar system, but it, and it right. could have made the trip between Elas and Troyes uh, at least twice. Oh, God. So they really should All have right. arrived. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I've got a role, if I understand correctly. And I have a reason of 10. And this is a, a matter of science. Oh, well, in that case, I'm. this is my maximum. Right. So, so in that case, 
want mm-hmm. to use threat to represent rushing through the task to buy more dice or are you cool with no i mean if we are not I, this is going to uh uh the, and, and can i can i represent that through a little role playing even Absolutely. if it is sort of it's left for. hand the left hand speaks to the right hand situation oh, don't um, forget yang he's there too yeah that's that's true but i was going to suggest that somebody humorously like someone who knows Mbuto very well, who's Korskov, could say to him somewhat humorously, well, hurry up. <laughs> you know, as a joke, obviously, mm-hmm. right? right. Um, Mbuto will, will uh, you know, kind of give him that look of, you know, <laughs> fuck off, buddy. And, and you know, <laughs> you know we're, we're, we know each other. It's kind of okay. You know, kind of give him that shut up look. And um, and the point being is that no, he's not going to rush it. I mean, it's been gone for five days. What what's rushing going to accomplish, right? Mm. I mean, we've we've got you know you, the so so he'll say something like that to Yang, something like you know when there's 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 no point in rushing this, um, just so we know he's not rushing. No. Um, so what does, uh, uh, what does Yang roll? I mean. Is he using well? Is I have to get one success at least, right? Yeah, but I have to get is, one success for Yang to assist, if I understand correctly. So if if Yang's assistance is activated, I'm going to pose insight and science for mm-hmm. for him uh, from the navigator's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and so I think I'm up against it. I've got just my two dice. I don't see anything else. I've cool. got. What about the computers? Where the sh- oh, right. The ship, ship assist. The ship, yeah. the ship mm. uh, can assist. You're using the, the ship's data banks. To... Right. But again, I've got to make my own roll first. Yep. Okay. Yes. Is it just two dice, Anthony? Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> and I have two successes on two Ooh. dice. Ooh, nice. One of which, interestingly enough, I'm, does scan interpretation focus have anything to do with this at all? Yes. I think so, sure. In that case, the one that I rolled on one of my dice should meet the needs of that focus, giving me three successes. Even Thanks. if the even if the focus had not been active, a one oh, is, okay. is, is two successes. So uh, it's it's okay. an either or thing though. You roll a one uh, and get two successes, or you roll under your focus under and get two successes. You can't okay. double it up. But... Right, right. I, I get that. Yeah. yeah. You don't you can't double dip. Yeah. So, so but that's cool. My f- Total is three successes, clearly motivated by his, you know, his acknowledgement here. <laughs> and and uh, and I think we've definitely got, this may actually be the first time that we've got kind of a Captain Mbuto sort of, uh, you know, this, this is going to work. Mm-hmm. Okay, this, this is going to work. Um, it's if you don't mind me saying, this is actually a retrospective backup of Anya and Mbuto staring down the authorities. Yeah. from the from the pilot <laughs> it's like a mm-hmm. retrospective backup on telex part of that moment um so uh so cool uh in that case let's let's uh let's get those assists ship and yang uh so yang scores a success uh, under his reason and security of 10 so he has a three so nothing no extra right. success from that should i roll for the ship as well yes please all right mm-hmm. and the ship's numbers are. Ooh. The ship rule of two. Oh, and the ship doesn't have to worry. <laughs> about <Yeah. what> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. I so, suppose it's um, asking too much to say the ship has a focus in everything. <laughs> <laughs> focus anything. <laughs> so we have then five successes. Yeah. That nailed a whole chapter, a whole unit, right? Uh, this well, is resistance. We haven't we haven't done the work. We haven't rolled yet. the challenge. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So That's the, where the, comes the in. one thing I easy. didn't say, the one thing I didn't say was the difficulty. The difficulty was two. So this gives you three momentum in hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the cost of one, you can negate the diff the resistance. Do we have? That seems do? always to be a decent. Oh, resistance uh, is brutal. We yeah, have yeah. to always kill there's, the resistance. There's yeah. resistance. Uh, yeah. Two yeah. also. Um, okay. so that's, that's kind of helpful. The other two, I mean, I, I leave it up to you. You know how momentum can be, can be spent. Mm-hmm. Um, 
your favorite thing and what what uh, Ron actually promised uh, KC was that the next time I get momentum, I'm going to spend it on an advantage. Yeah, advantage. <laughs> I think this will be the best place to get an advantage in terms of, you know, having a I'm beginning to believe in advantages more than I realized from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> a consistent yeah. scam. Yeah. yeah. A floating, you know a floating good. Times. Yeah, we, we, yeah, exactly. We want a little, we want a little good ball floating next to us, hovering slightly. Right. right. So what is, how are we going to phrase this advantage? What is What do you it? think, KC? Why don't you, why don't you, I think you've got a better sort of visual of, of, how this looks around the ship than I do. So. Well, considering that we are having a, you know, a rather well thought out search grid, I think maybe we can use the advantage to sort of like have the systems adjusted to that as a default. Like that's that's our constant um, search grid that we have at all times. So not only is that is that only going to help us find the ship if it's there, but maybe any detectable, let's say, guests arriving around that area. Like our eyes are constantly around whatever we've established. Okay. So then. An advantage of hidden things. <laughs> so as we remember, uh, advantages make the impossible possible. Well, this is a very possible mm -hmm. thing, which means that it reduces the difficulty of doing okay. so. That works mm -hmm. as well. All right. So we're going to be decreasing the difficulty of sensor scans by one. Which means if we're sending probes to specific locations that we that we suspect, uh, the difficulty is very likely to end up being zero when it gets there. If there's anything there, it, it should be able to detect it if you send it to the right place, which is a, a part of the later extended task. All right. <laughs> Speaking of the extended task, would you like me to use the challenge dice for the work? How many are we rolling in? You're rolling. Well, it starts with two from success plus science. Ambuto science, which is four. So that would be that's a lot. Six dice. Yeah. That's pretty good, yeah. On the on the pessimistic side, we could get about six work. If we have some blanks, then we probably get to run between two or three. All right. So uh, if I'm if I'm clear, all the momentum has been spent. Yeah. Okay. The resistance is currently zero. <laughs> we learned zero. our lesson from that decay. We hate decay. Mm -hmm. Watching it watching it decay is painful. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some kind of human expression from the 20th century. Uh, use it or or yeah. uh, no longer have it. <laughs> Something like that. Exactly. <laughs> right. All right. So I'm rolling the six dice. Ooh. And I see get, some federation there. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is one. Mm -hmm. There's one blank. There's another one. So that's two. Then there are three effects. Oh, beautiful. Rolling multiple effects allows you to do all kinds of things. So you've generated three work, four work, five work. You've five. produced extra work, all of which results in beating the one breakthrough you need for, or the two breakthroughs you need to get through this uh, this particular section. So this has been handled and handled soundly. And those three effects are yet to be designated or described. Was the, that right or the the three effects actually board. have been uh, described. Uh, that's okay. The the completing okay. of of the the whole task. Okay. That that whole part of the task. All right. Which sets up the second part of the task. It doesn't have to be done by the Imbuto Yang team necessarily it, it may be more appropriate for other people so just keep that in mind but it may be them working all the way through or adding in other people as as is needed. it so, evident on the bridge how well that that was carried out well yeah well <laughs> korsakov's <laughs> reaction and in in another I, I promise only to do this once an episode slight slip into russian diction was kidding I was kidding about hurrying up. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't use the pronoun because it just slips off when he's not paying attention. So, yeah. I think the term you would be looking for here is maledits. In Okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Although I was thinking he's speaking in English. In, in okay. Chekhovian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. It, it, more or less was mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah. All right. 
So the second part of the task, right, now that the, the plot has been made, right, the space lanes have been calculated, the second part is actually calculating uh, or, or releasing the boys. Mm -hmm. Now this takes a certain amount of time. Only the Avicenna can do it. And part of it, of course, will be fabricating and programming uh, the boys for this kind of atypical uh, usage. That usage yeah. has already been taken care of by the first part of the gated task, right? The, all right, so this uh, kid would bashing is what we do a lot, I imagine. So yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So this Sounds part like we want some engineering in this one, right? This one uh, would be would be engineers and and the like. And uh, so, you know, Ensign Yang could continue. Uh, Korsakov could be involved in this because it's going to involve uh, launching them uh, like the probes and, and like a torpedo, actually. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and it would actually happen in the, the, the torpedo bay rather than uh, on the bridge. Right? So, so we'll cut to the torpedo bay and uh, let's actually have... Uh, Korsakov and uh, Yang be present. And we don't have any engineering supporting characters as of yet. We've heard cranky voices from oh, yeah. the <laughs> from the intercom. That's I right. think that's about it. Session we've met one. we've met uh transporter chief Ahern, uh, but uh, but that's that's his special designation. He gets to just do that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so let's let's create one, shall we? Hmm. We don't have to go too deeply into it. We can just look at at the uh, control plus science pairing being the ten four split. Mm -hmm. But we do need a name for this character. trying to recall one of the names that I saw on a previous episode. Uh, okay. KC, I think this one's yours. I think we're- Yeah, uh, I do too many of these. I'm, I'm <laughs> interpreting these more often than I've decided. Uh, let me see if I could so remember. any ethnicity doesn't e doesn't even have to mm -hmm. be from Earth, right? Just has to be human. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Hmm. If you put it that way, well, obviously it will be human, but maybe let's have someone from the colonies. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Someone that maybe Kotrakov, you know, being from the same background, uh, it'll probably you know work work much better together. So. What's his name again? Baba? Is it Baba? Uh, yeah, let's just go with that. I believe he's supposed to be uh, African, like like African African descent. Uh, and I believe the name is spelled B U B A, Buba. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll work on that on the wiki. All right, so this is an this is an ensign ensign, Booba, right? All right. Is is there, and you know the devices are are around the room and uh, getting ready for you know receiving the signals down from the bridge when Korsakov and Yang arrive in the turbo lift. So this okay. is, um, mm -hmm. this is a task that uses control and engineering. One of these days, we'll actually use this equipment for what it was intended for. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, but for now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's the engineer's response. Is yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would mean we're at war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we had the drills. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, in that case, I guess we've got to start, uh, you know, unscrewing things and setting up things and looking very engineer-like. Um, the, uh, the, the only, I'm not even sure that I see Korskov as the primary on this. I see it more as just overseeing the, uh, overseeing the the refitting sure. of the torpedo ish right. part so he's there to lend assistance yang is there to lend assistance and booba is there to be the lead so that assumes that one of us i mean i think i'm going to be playing as booba then well yang's there so maybe joe could or it could go the other way it's your choice Yes. It's up to you. All right. So we'll have Booba as the lead. Now, again, we're left in a world with no momentum. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we ought to concentrate on this time. <laughs> it's a, uh, dif what's the difficulty of this task? The difficulty of this task uh, is only one. It's time consuming, but not particularly difficult. Okay. The resistance is two. That's our. So like that, that means Boba will have his base two if he gets assistance from Nambuto and Yang. Yep. To get basically two more. I think our odds are still pretty good. I mean, to get momentum. So I think I'll just go with just two dice for now. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to hit under 14. 14 or under, yeah. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Uh, two successes. Um, none of them are under four, so none of them generates, you know, focus success. So okay. We can so. now roll. We can now roll for the other two. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So, geez, maybe I'm dipping way far into everything we've got all kinds of assists here right we've got we do not have the ship as an assist in this you case do not. okay so we're, uh, we're working okay. on the actual physical sensor boys oh okay okay so this is action on the ship rather than action with the ship got it so we have <laughs> uh korsakov lending one die of assistance uh, okay using and his yang and as well this one is also going to be uh, engineering and what reason or reason sure okay yeah the engineer is, is using control because he's actually manipulating the, the stuff uh mm -hmm. i get a three um with a 14 or less sadly my engineering focus is laser tech not <laughs> edo tech still so that's not going to help i'm afraid um, but that's one success. That's one extra moment. Okay. That's, yeah. And for Yang, that's, what would this, what would what would this be for choice? Also, again, uh, reason and engineering. Reason that would be a eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should I roll this one? Why not? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Purists mm -hmm. will be rolling in their graves. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. You touched my dice. Seven. So that's another Ooh. success. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Everybody's working together. We're seeing us <clears throat> doing our usual fairly good, you know, teamwork, training. The ship is saving mm -hmm. up. All right. Yep. Yeah. We're, well, I also kind of like the fact that it's more of a personal muscle cooperation thing. Mm. Mm. You know, the, the it's the it's the talent of using the ship that actually really brings it off in all these cases, which I like. You have generated three momentum. How would you like to use it? My momentum goes to re re uh, reducing resistance down to zero. Mm -hmm. um, so these are two. There's two x. That leaves with two more extra. If we want to go to the bank. I don't think we need we need another advantage at this point. We could put them in the bank and use them for those desperate moments when Anthony drops all the complications <laughs> on us. So, um, okay. So why not? In the bank. Done. 
And here comes the roll. Mm -hmm. On six challenge dice. No, ah, uh, one single success. And mm -hmm. again, it's the exact same result. Three yeah. effects and almost the same result. Uh, so four work are generated. With That's the effects, thing. additional work are generated. Uh, and Great. one breakthrough is generated. So that allows uh, the other effect to trigger the final breakthrough, getting the two needed breakthroughs. Cool. That's so once fantastic. Again, this, this takes time because it, mm. it takes time. Right. right. Mm -hmm. It can't be done faster uh, than it's being done, but it can be done much slower than it's being done. Right. Uh, broken pieces of equipment, uh, things that just don't fit, mm -hmm. that are arguing, mm -hmm. bickering, coffee breaks, all these things. Doesn't happen. Right. You go down right. into the, the bay and one after the other, the, the things are, are processed. Other um, members are as trained. the ranking, as the ranking officer, can I report to the caption on the intercom about this? Um, so I, I'll hit the intercom, you know, to the bridge, uh, Korskov to the bridge, um, the, you know, <laughs> success and nothing broke. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> with, with precisely the point that, it, that it's routine to say what broke as we did it, right? What went uh -huh. wrong? And it's kind of like nothing. Who knew? Right. So the other aspect I want to communicate is that um, other members of the of the photon torpedo crew are there. I mean, there's so many boys that need to be dropped. Right. 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 So they're mm -hmm. learning the process. They've seen how it is, and they're now able to carry forward successfully and replicate the rest as the first batch are being prepared to be dropped, freeing up the senior staff to do senior staff stuff. So do we see the ship from the exterior basically laying a bunch of eggs, right? Mm -hmm. So using the rearward photon mm -hmm. torpedo tubes. Two, 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 two. Right. right. So. All right. Can That's Tillich the second make part a of quick your four part. RP response? Yeah, do it. From the bridge. Uh, understood. Uh, please make a note in the captain's log that the engineering team did not break anything. <laughs> all right so levity now fills mm -hmm. the, the bridge but there's that that weird like did the captain just make a joke yeah vulcan <laughs> or is he being serious make a joke. Yeah. You know, and they all look at him but they don't get they don't get the human you know like a human confirmatory response of yeah that was a joke there's nothing yeah he didn't <laughs> smile didn't raise the right. eyebrow nothing right. yeah mm -hmm. all right all right the third part of it, of, of this particular task, is the actual laying of the boys and the space lanes. All right. And we know where they're supposed to go. We have the items. We just need to make it happen. All right. So this, again, is back on the bridge. Right. And this again will require will require the tactical officer. Okay, so that's Korsakov. And oh, it, will, it will require Anson Yang. And it will benefit greatly from the acting captain as the the filter of all information. Mm -hmm. All right. So for this task, uh, our lead will actually be it'll actually be a command task right, so our lead will be uh, commander Tillich with assistance coming in from yang and Korsakov for Korsakov is it okay for me to still be in engineering and doing this over the intercom or is that not what you want uh, it's it's back on the it's back on the bridge okay yeah, back on the bridge. well no it does not need to be on the bridge Right, firing. Well, I'm just talking about yeah. me, just just one mm -hmm. character. Yeah, it's it's fine. I just like the idea of being a voice. Yeah, 
No, it totally totally works. Um, that the weapons can definitely be fired from multiple places yeah. on the mm -hmm. ship. So, so Korsakov is in communication by. Right. I'm I'm still sticking the around the, the the torpedo banks and stuff like that. I think yeah. sticking around with them. All right. So, for Tillich, it's presence and command. May I? Uh, add a couple of things in here to negotiate. Uh, the first one being a focus of navigation. Hmm. Sure. The second one being uh, that since Tillich isn't directly involved in, he, he's more coordination here, that his talent of doctor's orders, where this is a coordination uh, thing, treating this as a, this is a scanning of a body. This is laying things out as a uh, coordinating uh, a team yeah. for a, uh, uh, a medic. We're creating a giant medical transporter here. Right. So what's the advantage of using doctor's orders? I get to use medicine instead of command. It's only a five instead of a four. <laughs> That's huge. Uh, that's huge because yeah. that's going to determine how many dice are rolled. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And did we get? Uh, does determination refresh with each yes, episode? With each, ep with each episode. Yes. So so I think this is the determination. Uh, oh. Since I'm using the navigation All focus, right. I'm throwing determination here. All right. So what's the value that triggers? Uh, uh, there's the, no no use of determination without a governing value that applies. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and I think this one is pure virtue. Virtue is the only good. We're we're saving lives here. We're looking for lives. We're also laying out new lanes to help improve these people. Yeah, there's sure. there's multiple virtue going on here. Okay, so I buy it. We're, we're, okay. All right, so. That's Tillich's side of thing. Yang will be contributing with control and con. Nice. nice. <laughs> and Korsakov will be contributing with control and security. Okay. That's pretty good for me. Mm -hmm. So we'll begin with Commander Tillich. <clears throat> so I get uh, two dice plus two for determination. Uh, two dice Ooh. plus the two successes from determination. Oh, two successes, right. Okay. Um, if you want to use the determination that way, but I think that's the best yeah, way yeah. to use it this time. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. I don't think I need extra momentum on this. No, you've got those two successes. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 Uh, so use those I'll to roll, do other roll two. Yep. All right. I don't and know if I, I reminded... Roll... I remember to tell you guys, but of course there was momentum decay uh, at the beginning of this Bastard. part of the task. Yeah, yeah. I believe we saved two instead of one. <laughs> yeah, so you've got you've got one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> okay. okay, so this is this is so, Tillich's roll. Tillich's roll, two dice. All right. Do you mm -hmm. want me to do the roll? Uh, no, I got it here. I, I'm okay. I'm happy with Google Dice now. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> and a twelve and a three. So the 12 is a success and a three is below my focus. Yep. So two that's three successes plus the two determination for five. Yep. That's a good start. So the assistance mm -hmm. works. And, and let's not forget that the ship is also involved. We're using the uh, ship to do mm -hmm. this. So there is an assistance uh, die. So that could be uh, uh, Casey, roll that along with uh, Anson Yang. Oh, so Anson Yang's one failed. What? Uh, the ship also failed, I believe. Because the ship is using 14. Yeah, 14. Yep, that's a fail. <laughs> I was doing so well. <laughs> you want to well, fail the... in the cafeteria and then succeed here. <laughs> <for you. laughs> On the plus Maybe side, that's not I how might Yang have... sees it. <laughs> mm, <Maybe yeah>. <laughs> On the plus side, I have two successes, both dice. Right. That's seven successes. That's, that's amazing. Uh, uh, Korskov's rolling only one die. I'm, I'm sorry. Should I roll all over or just take one of them? 
They they both were successful. They both so. were, yeah, right. So mm -hmm. one. Yeah. yeah. You you get to pick which success you want. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> the they're they're quite similar. It's there's no focus the left. that helps me. So yeah. take the left <laughs> success. Mm -hmm. All right. And so now I've lost count. So you know, it's five okay. plus zero plus one. One. Or six successes, right? Against our uh Again, it's a difficulty of one. It's a tedious task uh, made challenging by the tedium of it, but it's not anything beyond, right? But the resistance was... The resistance is still two. So that means it's we've still... ended up with four. No, we can spend we... our momentum to get rid of We haven't gotten the resistance. Certainly... Let's do yeah. that. We absolutely need to do that. Right. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, right. there are five successes, or there's five momentum in hand. If you want to get rid of the resistance, that leaves you with four. And would mm -hmm. you like, what do you want to do with the... Is this where we get advantages? You could. Because I'd really like to nail could. the fourth step, if at all possible. What is the fourth step coming up? The next one after this one, the last one. Is, yeah, what's the, the description is, of it though? It, it's going to the places where the ship has to be. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah, we want now, advantages. I've, I've We've got, got to find this damn thing. I have thing. a suggestion that uh, that can be made, a system suggestion, if you're interested. Yes, please. So, mm -hmm. There is creative advantage, which we know all about. Yeah. There is its opposite, which is uh, to create oh. a, a disadvantage opposition. for the opposition. Right, Create right. problem, it's called. So how much threat is lurking up there about to be in opposition? <laughs> That's the, right. Well, happy, I think mm. I so, so we could, yeah, we could... yeah, there's, 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 there's lurking opposition out there. <laughs> you have already made it easier for you to do the finding. Yeah. So there's, there really isn't a mechanical way to make it even easier to do the right. finding. Right. Okay. Okay. But you can make it harder for an active problem to you know to be hiding the ship or escaping with the ship or, or whatever mm -hmm. right we don't know for Suggestion. sure yet that there is anybody opposing this whether they're right. trying not to be found or of course Sakov is 1000 percent convinced that there is <laughs> we're, we're, remember we he, he considers yeah. himself to yeah. have gone into a klingon shooting zone from mm -hmm. the start yeah. and so and i already mentioned that i wanted to get those shields <clears> like you know, snap the finger and they are up. I want, you know, mm -hmm. I want the, I want whoever does that to be sitting there, you know. Usually that's uh, Corsica. Nope. Yeah, I know, yeah. but I need to set mm -hmm. that up for somebody to do it right. um, as an advantage or be absolutely prepared, maybe even like with a remote or something. Who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, what do you want or to do? Right, is, activate the shields. From there is the other consideration that we got. We did get the complication in the earlier session with the entity with the ambassador. So this is a chance right. to sort of smooth that over if you want to, but I don't see that's it that's being not relevant. that bad an idea. Especially because mm. we got a glimpse through the cutscene that that's no joke. Yeah. Right. But we've got what, three to play with? Is that correct? Three momentum to we'll four. we'll lose we have four. We'll lose two if we do the with, with, with the advantage. So we still have two to put in the bank, but obviously we'll lose one as the team goes. So we have, uh, I, I like this sort of from a role playing perspective that we have Yang making a suggestion that we uh, consider the diplomatic relations that we're establishing here in setting this up. Whereas Korsakov <laughs> is suggesting, like... <laughs> listen, we're, we've still got trouble out there. And I suggest that we try to uh, arrange this in a way that will anticipate Shields first, potential talk later. problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and Up to you, Captain. Given Tillich's uh, focus on diplomacy, I think he's going to follow Yang's suggestion here. Yeah. and uh, negate or work against any potential problems on the diplomatic front by uh, maybe including the search parties a little bit more in the way that we set these things up and uh, really consider their feedback in the areas and the places that we're 
arranging these to suggest and maybe even set up the buoys in place that will uh, improve their space lanes in the future, not just for Ooh. this task alone. Yeah. So hopefully that will. Well, I've got to focus in diplomacy a... as well, so at least I know the lingo. I'm okay. not. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. He's not going to grumble. He's like, hmm, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So and maybe this... that will negate a potential problem there. All right, I like I like this a lot. So we're going to use okay. two to create an advantage that cancels out the previous complication. Right. Hey guys, we are helping. Yeah. You're welcome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Helping a lot. Now, this particular phase, this is the, the longest actual phase, right? This is the physical planting of, of all the mm -hmm. boys. We've now opened it up, right? Sharing technology, sharing interaction with the Troyans, and uh, opening communication. Anya Smith, perhaps, is coordinating relations with uh, her counterpart among the Troyans about all, all these details in the background. And then as the hours go by conversations between acting captain Tillich and the new younger uh -huh. ambassador mm. who is this friendly 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 fellow <laughs> this person is coldly polite very direct uh kind of a smoldering individual and Anya Smith is advised before uh, this call begins that this person is related to the royal family and close enough, based on Korsakov's uh, historical research, everyone knows that it's, it's King Achille of Troyes, right? Uh, so. This ambassador is Ambassador Achilles of the of the same same right, thing. So close right. enough to bear the same family name, mm -hmm. and is is now the the lead on the on the interaction with this Federation vessel, but isn't smarmy like the other guy started out. Right. Oh, thank you so much for coming. Oh, if only you could have come sooner. I, oh, I'm yeah. so worried about the, you know, washing his hands the whole time of any uh, responsibility. Right. Yeah. This guy is, you know, set and he's not posing in front of some cool backdrop. He's at his his desk with a computer terminal on the screen. And oh, the they're team. modern. They're grown ups. Yeah. Right. We we, we mm -hmm. do not. Yeah. yeah. Has lots of wave. lots of relevant questions about your progress. Has questions oh, about cool. the benefits. Has questions about the cost. You know, will it cost us to maintain these additional lanes? Will it open us up to to more piracy? What about interstellar? Tra I mean, there's a whole lot of things. Yep. Okay. Professional and factual. Uh, Till it can deal with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what we get. As a result of this um, this can complication canceling advantage, is that we get another cutscene as my gift to right. you right. of Ooh. Ambassador Kotri being taken off in chains. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Great! You was, just got someone executed. Good job there. <laughs> he was he was inciting. Mm. some sort of rebellious behavior among the, the Trojan space fleet, right? Mm -hmm. He was encouraging them. They had to be the ones to find oh, the right, missing okay. vessel and, um, you know, you know, use whatever information you can get. Yeah, pay no attention to those outsiders. They're no, silly nonsense right. or so, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, yeah. you know, he was, so he was encouraging risks and, uh, and break, you know, trying to break the search pattern. So this, uh, Ambassador Achille has had him arrested as a result of hearing what it is that you're actually trying to do, how it's being approached, what the benefits are to Troyes. Uh, this has been done. So now we have got, we're back to zero, right? From, from the negative place that could that be happened. worse. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Which brings us to the last task. We oh, did wait. end up with two extra momentum in our pool from from that last one, correct? 
Uh, yeah, they're still they're still in yeah. hand, and I still have oh. to roll the the work. Right. But this time right. I'll be right. rolling right. seven <laughs> dice. Whoa! It's so heavy I can barely lift my hand. <laughs> We got a double, our first double of the campaign. Ooh. That's two. We got two doubles. I was going to say, I thought I'd see two of those little boogers there. <laughs> so that's four on two dice. So that's the double double. Three. <laughs> Tim Horton's <laughs> reference. Uh, two blanks, mm. three blanks, and two effects. That's good. We rolled multiple effects so, uh, once mm. again. Right. This gives us six work. That translates Done. into a breakthrough. You've got effects, which Last translates into three. another breakthrough. So again, we yeah. smashed it, right? Mm -hmm. While this this uh, online conference is going on with you know the the king's cousin. We are the extended task kings, aren't we? Seems we we've like... been quite fortunate in our effect roles. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. We yeah. do know the day will come when six blanks <laughs> are staring at us. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Or you know, or, or the, 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 at least at least they at least they're blanks and not little uh -huh. you know derogatory <laughs> gestures. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, may I make a system suggestion, which is way probably disadvantageous, and you guys can correct me. Um, mm -hmm. should we th throw all the momentum that we get from this into just plain old awesome dice for Yang to roll navigationally for part four? For us to, for us to, to traverse, you know, these new search patterns? Is that part of the... The next, I'm thinking part of the about next part task? four. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm guessing is we got to get there, right? I mean, we have to go where we think it is. That's the next part. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, and that seems like navigation. And I love the idea of Yang rolling like massive base dice for this. Well, we only so. need at most six. So six momentum to, just to buy five dice without spending thread. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we smash it, we don't, we, or we could create advantages. Which Anthony is good. always seems to be suggesting that the choice of spending is in the roller's hands. It's in the roller's so hands. So if we, if Yang has a roll to make after this, I think we do not pressure him and uh, the choice is all his. So I want to show you what's Done. on the screen now. Remember, we generated six momentum, right? We spent four. Mm -hmm. I have added two. Scene ends. I take one away. You're left with two uh, as we go into the, the last part of the task, which is going where we think the ship has to be. Yep. All right. Now, here's the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> there are, of course, several places where the ship has to be to have been missed so far, which is why we're using the Avicenna for this task. It can warp very quickly to... Right, so different. we've got X number of places that are optimal for... Right, and that's what the work track represents. And mm -hmm. rolling breakthroughs will, of course, enable you to you know, kind of get ahead of the curve, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the idea, how the, how the task works. So, with Yang as the lead on this one, and this is purely navigational. This is control and con. Right. Unless, unless he wants Just to be second. daring. Yeah, I'll stick with control and con. No okay. Reason, no reason for evasive actions here. <laughs> okay, so that's that's the setup for this. You can uh, suggest anyone to assist or not assist, as uh, as you need. The Sorry, ship will, of course, <laughs> assist. Welcome back. No, I'll definitely need an assist. I believe the ship can provide an assist on this. Yes, the ship will provide an assist. Assist. That's that's one extra dice. Um... I may want to ask for Mbuto's assist uh, in terms of scanning. Sounds good to me. Cause. Yeah. 
So that gives <coughs> that theoretically gives us four dice, two of which we have to roll to determine the S six. Um, Difficulty still one. Difficulty the still resistance four. on this leg of it is three. I think I will buy one dice. Okay. I... With momentum? With momentum. So that I can use untapped potential. Good idea. Mm -hmm. And I think I will invoke a value here. Ooh. Uh, responsibility to the truth. Because we are looking for... Yeah. Oh. looking for someone. <laughs> right. All right. So keep so in mind, values are things that a character might actually like say. All right. So I guess it would be be, right? Be responsible to the truth, or we have a responsibility to the truth. Something yeah. like that. So that's awesome. I love it. And you want to spend determination, I guess. Yes. Yes. All right. So I'll just put my little reminder here. And. Uh, all right, so we're starting out with two successes before we even roll. <laughs> now roll, I'll roll three dice. Hmm. This is for control and con. I have two successes. Um, none of which are under focuses. So yeah, that's okay. just two playing successes. And four total. Then we, four total. And then we still have Ambuto's and the ships. And the ship. Yes. So two more dice, gentlemen. Can I roll for Ambuto here? Go for it. And I don't have his target number up for me, but uh, what is 14? Okay, I roll a two. Look at his focuses mm. and see what that means. It's he's, he's scanning, so he he's just scanning, generated so two successes. Scan interpretation, yeah. Cool. Six total. And then, uh, Joe, you want to roll for the ship? Sure, I can do the ship. Ship gets to 13. Good enough, I believe. And... On, on this particular roll, yes, it's, it's okay. squeaking by. Okay. Uh -huh. So therefore, seven, seven, only seven successes. I'm darn. God, we suck. <laughs> You've really got to start doing better. I'm... So, uh, con is four dice. Well, Yang is four. Yep, yeah, because he's ah. But first, we need to determine the tapidness of his potential. That's right. Because we're going to potentially double his momentum or give me a massive amount of threat. Or do double I... his momentum? No. No. Uh, you, you just roll one dice. You just roll one challenge. Yes. Yes. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah. Almost double. Yes. We rolled an effect, which means mm. I get threat. And the threat. Yay. Oh. <laughs> and, one, and one momentum, I believe. The challenge dice is read as one plus effect yeah one plus mm -hmm. effect yeah yes. so one more momentum so this was six yeah. momentum <laughs> ah, wow <laughs> which is now seven momentum i have to remember to give myself another threat mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> and so we have six mm -hmm. momentum in hand uh, which can reduce the resistance, which was three. It's going to take two of your momentum to do that. Mm -hmm. right, so now we're down to four momentum from six. It's still not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and... I'm happy to put a four in the bank. I mean, yeah, unless we, That's your choice. Unless we can create one more advantage because we have four. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fresh of ideas for advantages at this point. All right, so I'm going to put so them in I'm, the... I'm going to put yeah, them in the bank. Happy to One, put them in the bank. two, mm -hmm. three, four. So now there's five in the bank, and you're, uh, you've are you got six threat. And if we're talking about advantages, I'll still lobby for those shields. <laughs> okay. Uh, just, uh, just for clarification about the game, shields uh, are basically instantaneous um, so you can raise uh, the, the tactical officer can can raise shields as a minor action as part of their as part of their turn um, so uh, 
So that yes, would, but would a, but an advantage is an advantage. So it's a super good. Yeah, it's I just super wanted good to know what the it, whatever, yeah. what the baseline. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So whatever it would be would be pretty, pretty damn good. Whatever that is, who knows? Right. Um, okay. I'm thinking and... of what I'm trying to do is counteract the possibility of an ambush. Basically, mm-hmm. we're going in knowing that we're we're a target. Is is the way I'm looking at it. So this scene ends. I am removing your fifth momentum with kindness. I'm removing it with kindness. We have four left in the pool. This is a new scene. This He's is gently the... extracting the momentum. <laughs> yes, this is the uh, this is the actual search, the Avicenna's search. Now, interestingly enough, one of the five points that were identified by the computer as a a good location to have evaded scans thus far is very close to the proximity of that sensor contact from from hours mm-hmm. before right? right several hours have passed there's been lots and lots of of mm-hmm. working there's been you know lots of circumnavigation between elas and troyes right to to establish these different lanes and, and things so there's been lots of activity lots of time maybe a, an entire shift we're now we're back on on duty uh, fresh again so we have out system locations and we have in system locations and uh, one of those spots is that spot so what would you like to do is this where we deploy the probes for enhanced sense sweeps the ah so that hasn't been the probe so the, the, the only thing we've deployed so far are the buoys for the space planes and right so else. the avicenna can go places and the probes can go to other places right but that's expending uh you know a physical resource of the ship right well how many, how many doesn't it seem have? right that we should go there we've got a what we, one of our hard won optimal positions theoretically is actually where the signal from the hidden ship emerged. Mm-hmm. Seems like a yeah. gimme to me. <laughs> the it seems like the best first spot. Um, we don't believe in coincidence. We believe in coincidences, but we don't trust them. Exactly. I think yes. Float mm-hmm. that uh, most closely applies here. And uh, so, yeah, let's let's head to uh, the danger zone first, and maybe send out a couple of probes uh, to the the uh, uh, the ships helping us in the search might be able to check out. Okay. So um, we have a brief cut to the outside of the ship to see the probes being launched and it's going to take them time to arrive to these distant points on the the outer edge of the system as the avicenna moves to warp to inside the orbit of the second planet which is you know a molten world not unlike mercury very very close in proximity to to the sun which has drama i like a crazy Mm -hmm. amount of of moons right not Ooh. you know beautiful pristine moons, but it's got these you know jagged jagged things. asteroidy moons, yeah. Right, that obviously collide with each other at, at different points. It's a it's an absolute chaos, and it totally explains why there has been such difficulty with sensors because a lot of them are heavy metals. Right, right, right. So not not only is Elas rich in dilithium crystals which are extremely rare in most places of the galaxy including Troyes right they use it as like jewelry even right. yeah they use it as jewelry it's precious on yeah. on Elas they're, these are common rocks why are you giving me this right. thing? you know it's right. <laughs> you know? right. yeah. mm-hmm. um, but the they also have this heavy heavy metals which are you know registering on sensor scans but they're also blocking right so requiring the ship to to move around and navigate and i 
can I point out, uh, you probably remember this, but both Tillich and Korsakov have the talent constantly watching. Yeah. Minus one difficulty on hidden danger. Right. I, I've sort of wondered, do those stack where two people have the same talent? Um, it's not something I've I've considered. I will consider it. Mm. Uh, okay. In, we may have to go to the legal language of the of the yeah. text. To, um, yeah. Often. Yeah difficult like combat difficulties and, and things are often two mm. and uh so even if they did stack it only takes us to zero it doesn't give us that kind of wasted right. feeling uh, yeah. there are other yeah. things so but i'll i'll consider it in the future but what i'm going to use the talent for in this moment is to bypass the sensor sweep and activity and all the associated rolling right. with that We're Right, as as the Avicenna comes in and and this vista of this you know boiling world with its very hostile orbital body arrangement uh, begins on the sensors, it's very quickly detected by this crack bridge crew that there is wreckage in not in orbit but in proximity to the orbit of of this planet. So from a role-playing perspective, I mean, the second we get up there, the second the sensors come up, Ruskov's like, there. Wreckage. Yeah. Right. And who knows? I mean, maybe the, uh, it, I don't want to speak for Joe, but I like the idea of Telex saying, I see it, as if he had seen it already. <laughs> right. Does that make sense? We're both, both on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You say there, and yeah. I say, I see it. Yeah, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so the the uh, the engineer at the auxiliary panel next to Korsakov is is uh, bringing the screen up into magnification, and Embuto is conducting a scan. Right, and uh, as we as we come up to our conclusion for this evening, Embuto announces, "It is the wreckage." of a local ship but there's not enough of it <laughs> and the eyebrow goes up on <laughs> yeah and we cut to commercial <laughs> Sorry, I'm just not in the mood. So what's the problem? Bad vibrations, Davis, bad. That's sweet. I got a lead singer who comes on like I'm Mr. Bad Breath. Look, Davis, you want me to tell it like it is? Try this. Ah, Listerine, the old germ kill routine. Don't knock it unless you've got something better, man. Remember, folks, Listerine antiseptic kills germs that can cause bad breath. You say it's strong? It's got to be strong. Alas, love. Okay, fellas, no more commercial. Wow. Good vibrations, Jess? Great vibrations, David. With a little help from Listerine Antiseptic, kills germs last for hours. And then the commercial ends. <laughs> <laughs> what was the commercial? Oh God, they're so dreadful. Ravioli. <laughs> Can you find ravioli next time? I will do my best yes, to find Oscar something. Meyer. Something Oscar like, Meyer has a way with B O L O G N A. I've been having fun with the uh, with the car and the razor blades, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, the nubs. The nubs. <laughs> All right, so, um, gents, we have a little bit of time for table talk. I think. Are there any anything we need to talk about? 